more perfect union uh the i guess media organization that's been covering labor and recently uh started it's they're doing great work um they're not just confining themselves to you know say the uaw or starbucks workers united or things like that i've been seeing they're covering the uh unionization and labor issues as it relates to uh college sports also as it relates to the unsafe uh turf that nfl players are playing on which is causing more injuries but nfl owners refuse to address it and so then they're also dipping their toes into reality TV and some of the exploitative practices of reality shows like Love is Blind. And I watched this season. Um, we had seen uh, that this guy was kind of like interested in leftist politics, right? One of the contestants. This guy, Nick, uh, who is yeah. one of the main people in this video. Um, funnily enough, when they go into the stage of like living together, you can see either he was wearing it or it's in his room. He has a free Assange bracelet, mm -hmm. <laughs> which I was Fair astonished because I was like, I cannot believe anyone would even get close to a reality TV casting appearance to like. Well, have they let that it handy. on Netflix. <laughs> right. Yeah, but very cool, right? Yeah. Like free Assange. Um, Anyway, so he, I guess, spoke in part about his experience to More Perfect Union and how he was, like, basically psychologically manipulated and paid yeah. very little money. And, and like, the, the contract uh, terms here, I think, are really important. Because I, I, be honest, I, I watched the first episode of the newest season, and I just can't again, because it really is garbage. Yeah. Um, and But this put the nail in the coffin. Like, I can't watch that show anymore after seeing... Um, th and especially, like, this... Because I did watch the season that this guy is on, and the way that this couple was portrayed, it, it was... And the way it's sort of served up as sort of red meat for people just to dissect people as yeah. personalities, it's, I mean, it's not, you know, and there's all the stuff going on with Nickelodeon right now, the expose yep. and stuff like, um, this is an important thing to actually, for America to be confronting about the way it's been distracted itself for the last, uh, you know, few decades. And, and I'll just add even more context, much of reality TV came out of the writer's strike, Correct. came yep. out of anti-labor practices. Like I, I enjoy the real house because they're already independently wealthy and I don't feel as bad <laughs> about like some of the stuff that is portrayed but 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 a lot of this other reality stuff where it's just random people man it doesn't sit right with you as we start to kind of like unpack what reality TV really was structured to do which was inherently anti-labor yep. well, no, I'm done Okay, yeah, should we this not play I was this? Like, I'm okay. done yeah. filming because I realized kind of what had happened. They didn't tell me she had a panic attack. They didn't tell me anything. But they knew all. Yeah, I just almost accepted the abuse and the exploitation because I found Danielle. I didn't at all expect what actually went down and what happened, which was quite a bit more psychological tor torture, manipulation, and uh, just basically exploitation, which uh, there was no way to prepare for that. A lawsuit was the last thing that I wanted. This is the last place I saw myself being when I started this process. They are in control of every element of your life. You're put in a hotel room and you don't have a key. You don't have access to water unless you want to drink it out of the faucet or the shower. We're all just sitting there not being fed um, on any kind of regular cadence, uh, but definitely being fed a lot of alcohol. My body was just exhausted and, and dehydrated and hungry. There's three blueberries, you just eat them sparingly. I lost 15 pounds in three weeks from the pods in Mexico. And looking at my suit, it's, I had that thing tailored like the week before coming. Yeah. And like a perfect fit, right? Like a perfect yeah. fit, yeah. No, it's like your, your first suit out of undergrad, right? You just go to Macy's right. and pick, pick, yeah, pick up whatever's on yeah. sale. We didn't have any autonomy at all. Not only did they take our phones, they took our wallets, they took our IDs, they took our passports, all in the same instance, without telling us ahead of time this was going to happen. And we were filming 18 to 20 hours a day. The only time we weren't being filmed was when the union crews swapped out for a new crew because they had met their maximum for the day. You never see daylight unless you're allowed to use the bathroom, which is a trailer outside. They keep you in the state where you really have no idea how much time has transpired, it's one 
one of those things where looking back on it, if someone told me it was a month, I might have believed them. When Danielle and I were in Mexico, she got sick with a stomach issue. They came in with this COVID protocol and gave Danielle a COVID test, which she was negative. And then they said, well, due to protocol, you might still turn positive uh, within the next 24 hours, so we can't film you the rest of the day. Which was the day of the couple's reveal party, which is where all the couples get together for the first time with Nick and Vanessa Lachey, and everybody meets together for the first time. So I went for two, maybe three hours, and when I was finally finished there filming, they brought me back to the room and said to me in the hallway, you're mic'd, Danielle isn't, so stay close to her. She's sitting on the end of the bed. And when you go in there, talk to her about the couple's reveal party. I go in there and I sit down on the end of the bed and nobody had told me that she had just had a panic attack. Because I had three hours to sit here and not do anything but be in my head. I sat in the closet. I locked the door. I shut this and I sat in the closet and cried. I, I had to be here alone by myself. I told you I didn't for have hours. to go. Do you believe me? Do you trust me? I don't, I, I'm, I'm not kidding. I don't trust anything right now. Yeah, this is where I was like, I'm done filming. I threw the mic and was like, we're not filming and we're leaving. It's all manufactured at that point because this isn't a real life situation where I'd go to a party without her, come home after she had a panic attack, and then have a conversation about what happened at the party without talking about the panic attack. They have a product they're trying to make. And well, pause it for a sec because I remember the exact situation here. Um, I watched this season. Uh, this was the live, this was season two. I haven't seen any of the one since but um this was trying to portray her as hysterical and yeah. jealous which is what yeah, we, what we received context, yeah yeah of, of like oh this is you're ill you're in a foreign and actually we don't even know we haven't got to it yet but the contractual pressures they're under at, at this moment. oh yeah well i'm i'm curious to see but it just is it, it it's yeah anyway it's it's really messed up <laughs> This cell, and we are the raw materials that they're crafting to create that product. And there are no regulations or guidelines about how they can treat the raw material to create that final product. This whole entire experiment is designed to break you down to your most unhealed and most damaged version of yourself so that they can exploit you for free labor, essentially, or labor at $7.14 an hour, which is what you break down the amount of hours and what we made, that's what you make per hour. So a lot of time when I talk about the exploitation, people online through comments, DMs, Reddit threads will say, well, you signed up for this. So it's difficult in the moment to leave the show when you know that you signed a contract saying that you can be sued for $50,000 in damages. Yeah. I'll actually read this whole part. I agree that $50,000 is a reasonable estimate of the amount of damages producer is likely to suffer in the event of any discontinuation considering all of the circumstances existing as of the date of this agreement. So $50,000, if you decide mentally you can't handle this and you need to go home. In the back of my mind, I was thinking, I think we can, uh, this I think isn't kind right. of proves a point uh, yeah. there. And, and yeah. good for Nick, because he's, I know he's no longer with Danielle, is my understanding, that they, they split up. And he's still having her back and speaking about, like, the reality of it. Because I she was portrayed very badly, Horribly. Spe specifically compared to him. Object of ridicule. Yeah. Right, there to be mocked for that season for Netflix investors uh, and for us and as and as like having that sort of like air of like you know oh like a crazy hysterical woman just without any context of like what conditions might be making her right. act this way right as opposed to just being oh she's jealous she's anxious like look at her going insane and having a meltdown right all right i've never seen this particular episode or season um but uh, you know what when, when i was watching this i was thinking about how you know i don't think it really connects to people but there's a reason why a lot of reality tv stars like when their season is over or whatever you see them like doing anything and everything they can like the random endorsement deal a lot of them do like late night like like a uh, nightclub appearances because that's a big thing it matches with sort of like what DJ. a lot of reality tv shows are about about or are, are about right djing things like that because they 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 made nothing off the show it's not like they um you know they get to go home 
and wait for the next gig like an actor or actress does in like a, you know in that profession because people are assuming that the individual they saw on the show is actually who that person is to their being and that there isn't any like you know you could ruin you could ruin your reputation by how this show chooses to portray you uh, regardless of whether um you know it was manufactured by the production company like uh you know they just talked about here in this clip yeah and uh part of the problem too is that you know i was a big fan of jersey shore when i was a teenager right and you look back on that now they also were filmed they had no privacy there were room there were cameras in the rooms when they would have sex with each other the only place there was no cameras were the bathroom and they were there for weeks on end no phones no contact with the outside world just alcohol partying um and together and 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 being together which created like abusive situations like the ronnie and sam relationship was abusive and that just they just kept filming that and you like they're still doing reunion shows like the 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 show, jersey shore family vacation is what they're doing on on tv now and you realize oh they're doing that because they never got any residuals there's a bunch of contract lovers in our chat right now saying they signed contracts yeah we are publicizing the terms of those contracts and being outraged about them i, I like and also an illegal an illegal contract does not supersede the law like right. there are yeah. contracts that are thrown out in court all the time because they're against the law like the idea that listen i understand these production companies are looking for people who are or at least say they are fine with you know their their lives being put out there and all the terms of uh you know being filmed 24 7 or you know there's a camera in the bedroom when they're having sex or whatever but still there is basic you know employment laws worker labor laws and they should have the right to regardless of agreeing to this stuff if at a point it gets too much for them they should have a right to just say i need a break or i need to stop without yes. being charged fifty thousand bucks yeah <laughs> you know? I, I can't believe it's, like a producer like, i'm a producer i am a media producer the idea that i would make a term uh write up a uh, term sheet like that and make somebody sign it I, I i'd rather walk off a bridge honestly that's so disgusting yeah yeah i mean the the, the there's a reason that's what unions and bar collective bargaining is for you guys it's about creating contracts that are fair for the workers so this is i i don't understand what people are talking about there um, it's a microcosm like a lot like people i mean join oil field uh work because they, they think they're going to make a hundred thousand dollars technically they can be aware of the risks of that sort of thing and how it's massively dangerous or whatever um and but that does that mean all of a sudden like okay well you knew the risks of of doing that dirty job now like you can die or should we actually care about people who are forced to labor for capitalists and like i'm not i'm not, I'm not saying it's the exact I, it is it's ex exploitation the the raw material as he put it very well in that is the exact same raw material that has people doing bad jobs and 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 we're in a uh, an economy now that is inherently and, and much more precarious and often about people making their own job or m doing multiple jobs or using social media and attention to get further and to create other jobs for themselves because economic opportunity isn't there. So we have these new like we have social media, we have the Internet and we have people making money through that. And you're going to begrudge people who go on a show that maybe will give them a little more followers and more economic opportunity in the future. I mean, that's 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 wrong, guys. That's anti-labor. I don't know who's saying this, but um, I There's just people who just want to say they deserved it. Sure. It's great. Gross. Well, I mean, the listen, these are like, listen, some of these people probably are very unlikable people, but that doesn't mean there's there's tons of unlikable people out there. Every yeah, day. Like, who, wanna, that don't deserve who, to be punished for. That's why like, producers want to grind them up and spit them out. Right. They still don't deserve it. Right. You know, yeah. um, when I when I when we talk about like labor laws on this show, we're talking about rights that belong to even people out there with MAGA hats and shit like that. Right. But, yeah. We wouldn't normally, you know, associate with or, you know, hang out with maybe or we might find to be have terrible personalities or whatever, but they still deserve basic human dignity and basic human rights. It's also this also speaks to how like and this and as like, you know, Emma can attest, I am a <laughs> I am a strong, strong uh, consumer of reality TV. But you see the economy and how it's changed, which is that 
the it's not necessarily that reality TV pre social media was less exploitative. It was certainly less exploitative. I mean, excuse me, it wasn't. It was not certainly less exploitative. They actually probably did more experimenting. Like I don't know if everyone remembers that kid show where they they let all these children try to like develop a society together, and it basically became like a Lord of the Flies situation. That there sounds was, like, like Milf Island, which yeah. is a parody on Thirty Rock. There was like less of an uh, there was less fettering, I would say, in terms of that. And that they just tried this shit with no with no uh, breaks or no guardrails. But now, because it can, because with the influencer economy and and reality TV becoming a profession, yeah. people actually are more inclined to potentially be willing to, or at least consenting to, debasing themselves in this way for not just what they're going to be able to do on the show, what they're going to be able to do on the show, which is like the actual ostensible product for them, is a means to an end to potentially have a career after this. Yeah. So they're going to do that because they want because they're they're thinking about it in a way of I have to stay on this show or be invited back so I can return for another season so the endorsement deals that Binder was talking about the club appearances the bar appearances the DJ sets the meet and greets keep coming if they stop coming I'm no longer a personality. I am no longer yes. my my personhood is not inflated to be X person from Survivor, X person from the challenge. I become I just become a a private citizen again and what I was what I wanted out of it goes away. And so producers and the companies can absolutely hold that over whether it's in in voluntary or voluntary, they hold that over them. That soft power is always there. You want to come back, don't complain. Yeah. And, and, you know, we should say that this is analogous to so many other industries. This isn't just for, like, yep. inscrutable, like, annoying reality TV stars. Like, for example, uh, you know, in pro wrestling, unless you were in the tip top of the superstars making millions of dollars a year from merchandise and things like that, when you get into your 50s, 60s and retire, your retirement isn't actually retirement. You still work the bingo halls, the, the, the high school gyms for small indie federations. Mm -hmm. For a couple hundred bucks because you can't afford to stop you go to the conventions every weekend to sign autographs you're signing hundreds of action figures at these conventions i mean your entire life becomes basically pro productivizing your yourself to be able to continue to make a living because there are no, there, there's no union protection. There's no retirement plan, retirement funds. There's no uh, uh, fail yeah. safe. There's like, unless you, again, we're making enough, which very few of them do to do that for yourself. You have to go out there and continue to sometimes even debase yourself for a payday yeah. of a couple hundred bucks. That's the plot of The Wrestler, by the way, which is my favorite Aronofsky film. Uh, yes. Best one. Um, also another great New Jersey movie. But, uh, but the... I just saw the other day, Binder, um, the girl from Honey Boo Boo. Honey Boo Boo, I don't, I'm sorry, I don't know what her name is. Her mother spent all her money. She can't pay for college. Wasn't her name Honey Boo Boo? <laughs> no, it was her nickname. It was something else. But like, the, I mean, if she had, if there were residuals right, yeah. in these reality TV contracts, if these weren't exploitative contracts, the same thing right. that the actors were fighting for, right? Right. If right. people people are still rewatching Honey Boo, I mean, I would never watch that garbage. Well, that if, was exploitive, if, if, obviously exploitive at the time too. But if, like, if I recall, her sister even had to take over the 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 legal parental rights because the mother was just like she she let it go to her head and she took all the money, yeah. and she she didn't provide for her her kids. I mean, um, if there were uh, laws in place that would force production companies to to protect uh, uh, underage children who are, you know, actors who are involved in these productions, forcing them to put money aside and like trust funds or something for them, then that specific scenario, you know, could maybe not have stopped how the mother turned out, but certainly would have helped the children. Yeah, exactly. Um, all right, well, great job, More Perfect Union. And I, I, I personally love how expansive their scope is in terms of when they're addressing like labor exploitation and not just making it about um you know uh, the what people traditionally think of as a worker because that also makes worker solidarity more expansive when people understand the real power dynamics at play and also i think these sorts of people coming out and talking about about this brings uh you know the uh, uh 
the uh, you know the the positive effects of union protection to light to people who don't consider it this way like these aren't you know uh, when you think of unionization efforts it's usually not uh, and and this is wrong headed obviously because these are people who do the everyday you know heroic work that you know change lives and stuff but when people think of uh, uh teachers unions or you know uh, uh people fighting for service industry unions it's not essentially people who uh, the, that they look, you know, the type of person that people look up to or aspire to be traditionally. But when you got people with a, a platform who people look at as like, oh, I'm a fan of theirs or I'm a, you know, whether it be in the enterta- entertainment industry and in sports, uh, that, that, that idea of solidarity, I think, shines through in a way that um, only, only comes from that direction. Again, it's unfortunate it is that way, but that's just how people are. Yep. All right, guys. I'm sorry. No more time for calls. Um, I apologize. We went long in the first half. Um, gonna read some IMs and get out of here. Um, Paul Prague, Minnesota legislators are tackling parents exploiting their kids on social media too. Yeah, I saw that. Um, that's good. Uh, Ramona says reality TV has been doing some horrific shit to the people on their shows since the jump. Look at Jenny Nicholson's video about Opposite Worlds, a show where many contestants ended up severely injured, starved, and uh, cold because producers viewed them as cattle. Sure, reality TV is trash, but those on the shows deserve to be uh, still deserve to not be treated so horribly. Okay, sure, it's trash, guys, but like pe- people consume this. Like, I don't under- I, I Ramona's your it's comment. It's a major industry. What are you talking no, about? No, no, no. Yeah, your comment was great. I don't mean to pick on you, of course, Ramona. You were saying that they should be treated better, of course, but yeah. I don't understand like that construction. I mean, like, okay, you know, Burger King isn't good for you, but the, the, the people that work there have like not, not, you know, deserve less empathy for the service they're providing. I mean, it just makes very little sense to even frame it like that to me. Um, Harry from Munich says, uh, even just not being allowed to drink non-alcoholic would put over the line for me. All the know your limits talk should have been made it clear how bad it is to make people to get drunker than they want to be. But they want people very drunk because they, it, it, it helps. The, Honestly. The rea- I mean. You know what it is? Is Do you ever see that Onion Sex House? No. Uh, they, did a, they did a fake reality show called Sex House. That's and funny. literally like people get there and it's like there's no food in any of the refrigerator. It's just alcohol. It's like, oh, actually that is not that, that far off. Oh, it's not. Oh my they, God. The, ba- the Bachelor, I think, and Love Island, if I'm not mistaken, both had to implement um, drink restrictions because of some conduct on their shows. And Bachelor in Paradise, Bachelor in Paradise had Paradise. to shut down production because there was a... To be People blacked out basically like there was a, a, a sexual, very a very very nebulous and, and, and not con- consensual sexual interaction yep. that they caught on camera and then had to shut down production over uh lemonhead said people who defend bad contracts might as well uh tune into pbd instead of mr yeah uh, fantastic moron. I remember when Real World premiered and it was sus back then, but I watched it until it became apparent it was a predatory show and a contrived situation to exploit people, but I had no idea it was this bad. Hopefully these exposed will kill the reality show culture. It's dying. It's definitely not it's definitely not what it was. I think people are beginning to realize it. Love is blind is a little bit of a Johnny come lately. Um Joanna says, question about the college sports should die take. Does it apply to just sports that make money or all varsity sports or or do you even extend it to intramural sports? I think I don't want to speak for Matt, but when I'm specifically referring to it, it's the ones that are explicitly for profit enterprises that don't pay their players, which is really college football and college basketball. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure I mean, there are probably some if there are some highly paid uh, high school coaches and there's a big business being done for varsity, I think uh, that uh, money should also be looked at um, for, uh, you know, not redounding to like one per like the college sports thing. It's like you look at the number one public employee in most states and they're like head coaches of the football team. Yeah, like, it's disgusting, like literally highest paid pub- empl- public employee in the state of Alabama was Nick Saban before he retired the University of Alabama a football coach yeah highest paid public employee in south carolina Dabo swinney the universe uh clemson uh coach in south carolina like yeah and, the, and those guys don't like when players make money let me tell you <laughs> right 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 aaron is not cool says emma fun question is maria your front runner for bachelorette i've stopped watching the bachelor honestly for uh a lot of the reasons that we just talked about 
And frankly, it's kind of boring. And yeah, <laughs> it's out, it's also very heteronormative and very, out, very. and white and outlived its like construction and and it just yeah. It is a warped sense of like who is actually single. Yeah. In the world. <laughs> <laughs> Danny says Love Lies Bleeding was really great. Uh, I think I already read that. Um, Caesar Brandon was on fire with the analysis today. Uh, let's go, Brandon. Hammering, ha- uh, Han Karan- ha- hammering Hank Aaron. <laughs> um, I thought it was a uh, Harkonnen for a second. Uh, many white Americans see, I'm reading the book. Many white Americans see being a real American and having rights as being a white American. Um, it's how they justified torturing on Guantanamo Bay. It's why some of them said Obama doesn't love America. Yep. Golden Oyster Colt, don't call Featherman an elf. He is clearly an Ent from the forest of Fangorn. Does anyone know what that is? Ent is like a, Ent is like a tree person from Lord of the Rings. Ah, oh, he is one of those. <laughs> uh, Dave, uh, the apprentice. Oh, although those were good and kind. Wise. Yeah, they're they're allies. So yeah, he would be like an evil uh, Z- uh, Zionist. He's an orc. <laughs> yeah, or an orc. Yeah. Uh, Dave, the apprentice. Oh, I already read that. God says, sometimes I don't believe in me either, but I promise to give you f- uh, free will and what you do with it is up to you. I'm making dinosaurs on Mars. Don't come here or send Elon because that would be funny. Uh, it's not delivery. It's Bongino says, <laughs> I heard an AI translation of a Hitler speech into English and it was basically just a Trump speech. I've read translations before, but to hear it spoken in English was uncanny. Um, yeah, I'd like to listen to that. Left is breast, says Ohio resident here. Amazing how quickly East Palestine left our news cycle, given the apocalyptic imagery. While the lengths will go to avoid accountability for those <laughs> responsible, I believe the company attempted a meaningless settlement to prevent any future legal remedy. I believe you're right about that. I Colin, will say that's 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 everything now. I feel yeah. like things move out of the news cycle so quick, things that are deserving of people, you know, uh, talking about it and discussing it or, you know, it lingering in your mind longer than it, you know, it does nowadays. But, you know, like it's the world we live in now, unfortunately. Yeah. Three more. Uh, Brooklyn Best says, according to our local news, we're in a crime wave. <laughs> How are you able to leave your house without being attacked by these violent criminals and Spanish invaders? LOL. Left is best. Oh, I'm so sick of it. Um, Solidarity from Norway says, Emma, what's your least favorite Aronofsky movie? I'm guessing Mother. I didn't see, um, I didn't see Mother. Uh, It's definitely The Whale. It's definitely The Whale. The Whale is a trash film. Um, But I like The Fighter and I like, um, The the Whale is, I mean, I, I just found it to be, like really fat phobic while pretending it wasn't it's it's just it's like those those new like that movie blonde which pretends to be subversive and actually empowering when it's really just a fantasy about like uh marilyn monroe like getting to see her give a blowjob it, it the, the the that guy who does the stupid uh the idol and 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 um euphoria is like that too where like you know i'm i'm actually empowering women by showing their tits with the male gaze all the time i mean give me a break i I hated the whale uh i heard yeah i heard i heard i heard that about i haven't seen the whale either but i had heard that about about a bunch of my friends who saw also were like it's extremely exploited exploitative and like emotionally manipulative (laughs) yeah no the the wrestler is his best film um the whale is his worst film i haven't seen mother okay um, NYC driver says uh, MMA and boxing are amazing sports but have the most exploit- exploited athletes fighter unionization will never happen because promoters undermine solidarity they frame Floyd Mayweather and Conor McGregor money as unattainable if fighters unionize which is a flat lie good point and the final I am of MMA is very much a, a monopoly too um, yeah you know, if 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 you try to unionize and UFC bans you because of that, then that's it, pretty much. I mean, yeah, there's, you know, even wrestling now. That was wrestling for a while, but wrestling has other options now. Um, but 
you know, with MMA, it's UFC, and that's pretty much it on the mainstream stage in terms of like a full time living. Uh, you know, uh, wrestlers can go out every weekend multiple times and and do a, do a show uh, because of the nature of it being you know scripted and working together. Obviously, they get injured, but MMA fighters have to prepare for months for a fight, which means they have a limited number of dates they can actually you know uh, cash in for a payday, and you know without that UFC money, that that leaves very few options. The parent company of UFC just settled a $335 million uh, settlement with their fighters um, just yesterday. Well, there you go. For wage suppression. Of course, Endeavor, the organization's parent company, admitted no wrongdoing. Oh, yes. (laughs) And the final I am of the day. Lemonhead. A lot of people, even good people, want to believe that they will never sign a contract that exploits them. That they're smarter than that, but we they've rarely ever been put in these situations. The ignorance only empowers employers. More perfect union is doing good work here. 